Hello and welcome, I'm Andrew Goodman. Currently I'm making video tutorials on Affinity Photo for the iPad. Today's video is about snapping, grids and guides. And I'm going to be covering importing a graphic from Google Chrome, having a quick look at the Layer Effects Studio, how to turn on snapping, looking at grids and the grid settings, how to use guides, margins and their settings, and much more. So let's get into it. Okay, let's just go into Affinity Photo on the iPad. And we're going to open up the previous project we've been working on the last few videos. So for this, I want to put the Universal logo on this poster somewhere. Universal makes Back to the Future. So I'm simply just going to go to into Chrome. I already looked for it beforehand and I found a nice Universal logo. So if I hold down one finger, copy image, come back into Affinity Photo with one finger, press down and paste. So if I select it, you can see that it's not the color we want to be. I'll shrink it down a wee bit. Just going to go into the Layer Effects Studio and down to Color Overlay. I'll be covering more about the Layer Effects Studio in another video, but this will just give you a wee taste into it. So we've clicked Color Overlay and I am going to put that to white. Very simple to use. I know I went over that quite quick, but went into Layer Effects Studio, clicked on Color Overlay, and changed it to white. And then we'll go back into this layer. And I will move it up here somewhere, maybe nice, nice and small. So this is where the, the grids come into. If we click on the document icon, first of all, we'll put snapping on. I've already enabled snapping, snapping off. Snapping on. I like to have snapping on. If we come down to grid, I'll show you grid. We're going to be working more with guides at the minute, but let's go into the grid. Show grid first of all. It's very light in this poster. So what we can do is click on the grid color picker and just change that to white and straight away we can see it much more plainly. There's lots of different grid modes. Lots of different ones. We're not going to be choosing any of these. And that was a mistake, but it was a happy mistake because if we click on this, like everything in the Affinity Photo, you can click either the left or right arrows, or you can either click on the thing itself and just select them that that way. But we're, we'll go to Auto. When change the spacing, you can either click on it, go to 30, or just drag your finger and change the spacing that way too. And then there's guttering and there's divisions to to show you what that looks like. We're not going to go into that divisions where there's then even smaller divisions of the grid. Again, we'd need to change that color. Maybe change that to red. Maybe a light red would pick it up a wee bit more. Change our grid back to white. So I'm just going to hide that grid for now because what I really want to spend more time in is guides. Guides is really powerful. If you're coming from a Photoshop background, it's more like less like rulers. So you can simply add it. There's a horizontal one added. There's a vertical one added. And we can position them if we want also. See the wee white arrow here? If we click here, that means we're going to have margins too, which we're going to do. And again, there's columns. Columns is simply a bit like a grid. I'm not going to worry about that. Put them back to zero. So margins, we'll do that because for the poster, would maybe like, let's see, maybe a 10 mil around it. Straight away, you'll see the margin appear. And we'll just add 10 mil around the whole poster. And we can show these or unshow them. I'm going to keep them on at the minute because if we pinch and zoom, so it doesn't actually snap to the margins. So what we need to do, it will snap to the guides here. So we've got those margins set up. So if we go back into guides, we can actually add another one and we can bring it up to, we know it's going to be 10 mil and then add a vertical one and move this about. Try and align it as best we can. We're only one mil out. Again, you can move this with your finger either side or just click into it and get it more precise. So now that we've got those two lines, if I want, I can hide the margin lines and then go back 
to our universal logo and move it up here and that fits in that fits in quite well and then again document guides hide them and then that's it hid so that's not looking too bad at all so there you go that's just a quick lesson on snapping how to enable snapping grids and guides very useful guides again just like photoshop photoshop's rulers and they're very powerful at any time if we want just to click into them or add more we can see what we are working on there and i've just noticed even though this is snapping here i want that universal logo up to the very top so I'll maybe zoom in now it is snapping to it but that's because it's snapping these are the dimensions of the image so it's snapping to here so i want this to go all the way up to the top and then it's the same space on this side as this side zoom out that's looking that's looking even better now and then i'll just hide that so our poster's coming on quite well in the next lesson we will add some text so there you have it i hope you've learned something new please feel free to like this video and subscribe as there's going to be a lot more videos coming out soon on affinity photo for the iPad. Please feel free to leave a comment. I read and reply to each and every one. The next video coming out, I'll be looking into adding and formatting text in Affinity Photo. And if you like this video, please check out the last video where I explore the pen tool. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.